Right. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of Dad to Dad. Uh, today's topic will be uh, family tra uh, traditions. And uh, before we get started today, I'll introduce myself. My name is John Monteleone, uh, the father of Rochelle and Antonia. And uh, let's introduce our uh, co-host here. Uh, Jose, we'll start with you. Hey, everybody. My name is Dr. Jose Manuel Villarreal from San Diego and uh, father of Nathan Macario and Noah Manuel. And I'm Tim Langan from the National Parents Union, a uh, proud father of uh, Max and Dylan. All right, welcome gentlemen, it's good to see you. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, today's uh, episode is gonna talk about family tra traditions, I can say that word, and the men's role in keeping those going. But before we get started with that, I just wanna ask both of you a question. Um, what, is, what is one thing since your governors uh, instilled the stay at home order that you guys started that you want to continue once your states kind of reopen up? What's, what's one good habit that you've gotten yourselves into? Jose? I would say that, wow, that's a good question. As a father, I would say that I would want to keep, continue to be connected with my sons around their work because I am curious about how they're keeping up the pace. As a professional, I would say uh, continue to feed the minds and the hearts of our families the way we are right now. Um, awesome. Those would be the two big things that I would love to continue. Yeah. Tim, how about you? What's one thing you're going to try to continue? Jesus, I, I don't know if I can follow that. My, 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 mine will not be as nurturing, but um, uh, you know what I love to do is just before bedtime, um, sometimes it's a special like late night treat. I'll say, hey guys, you know, we talked a lot about Minecraft on this show. Mm -hmm. or, uh, and Pokemon Go, I'll, and I, I, they know I hate the screens and it drives me crazy, but a few times a week I'll say, come on guys, let's take a late night walk and we'll like walk up and down the streets and catch Pokemon together. And it's just a good time for me to catch up and they think it's special. And um, I just, I love it, I love it. Mm. Awesome, awesome. So two, two things come to mind for me. Um, so one, as you guys know, I'm a divorcee, and my, my, oldest, my youngest daughter, Antonia, she spends, well, she's 18, so she spends most of her time just out and about. But when she's, when she's settled into one spot, she spends a majority of her time with her mom. <clears throat> and when this pandemic hit and the stay-at-home orders kind of came into play, I was really scared there for a while that I was going to just not see her for mm -hmm. a very long extended period of time. And then she went through that period where she was quarantined. Um, but recently, we, we have been running three, four times a week. And, and this is probably the most consistent day-to-day -day thing that we've done in a long time since she's left for college. And uh, that's, that's really one thing that we talked about the other day. Like, the gyms are starting to open up around here. People are starting to, like, it's no longer stay at home. It's just strong recommendations. Um, but one thing I want to commit to is just really running with her on a weekly basis and spending time with her. And then the second thing that we're doing that I want to continue to do is really just um, frequently going to and eating, um, ordering from like local businesses, um, those in town and not so much those franchise places just to keep mm -hmm. the money in the, in the local economy. So those are two things that I want to continue to do once the state opens up fully back again. So, um, so here we are, fellas. And uh, I'll tell you what kind of played into my, my thinking about family traditions is I was talking to my brother because Memorial Day is coming up. Mm -hmm. And something that happened in our family back in the early 2000s is my mom would historically, before she passed away, she would historically post every holiday for our family. Like mm -hmm. that was the tradition. Everybody came to mom's house. That's where everything was. It didn't matter what the holiday was, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, New Year's, you name it. And so we were talking about it. And my brother is normally the one that takes Memorial Day. Um, but when my mom got cancer and she came down sick, one of the things that, that we decided to do as a family is we decided to kind of take a holiday and host it at our house. And the holiday that I, that I took was Thanksgiving because it was always my favorite. Um, so we kind of kept those traditions going. My mom had passed in 2011. And so we, we still keep those family traditions going where we still host those holidays and bring everybody together. So that's what got me thinking about, you know, what, what space is it for a man to continue family traditions? Because I remember growing up and before my mom got sick, everything was centered around the women in the household. 
My mom did all the cooking. My mom and my aunts and my grandmother, they're the ones that had the little black books of all the recipes and they would hand those down, hand those down to the girls in the family and the nieces in the family and they would continue those traditions and, and those meals. Um, so I, I posed the question to the both of you, like, how does that work in your family? Like who carries on the trend, the, tr the traditions and pass those on to the, to the younger generation? Yeah, I think that's, that, that's a great one, John. Um, it's interesting, especially the last three, four years since I got divorced. Uh, I don't have the normal family traditions anymore because it really depends on where my kids are. It depends if they're with me on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve or Thanksgiving or Easter. But the one thing I have noticed is um, as far as the, those special holidays go is um, I'm taking more of a role in it as a son trying to help my, my, older, my older parents. Uh, specifically my mom. So I make sure she's not cleaning up anything. Uh, I'm cleaning up everything for her or my brother is. Um, and I'm cooking more throughout those. Um, and that's just, I don't know if that's so much as, as being a man um, as much as just wanting to take care of my parents as they get older and take care of that responsibility. Um, it is great though. I love it because, you know, my, my, my dad grew up in a family with an old Irish mom who did everything for him. The guy could barely work a microwave up until five years ago. So I mean, like, to, to be a man who can cook and clean, um, it's 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 a trip in my family. It, I know it, it blows his mind. Jose, how about you? I don't know traditions, right? Traditions. We've broken a tradition today. Where is Michael Scott? Yes. The Where bubble, is my piece of bubble of love? Bubble so I can't keep pulling my soul. Come on, Michael. You're, hey, you're with us today, my friend. We can't wait to have you back. That's right. I'll tell you what. It's very interesting. I would say that traditions for me, since when my father was alive, and I would go to the small town with my mom and my dad lived, and the tradition there was that I would arrive, my mom would have, cook me food. I'd sit on the couch and talk to my parents for hours on end um and all the way till 10 11 o'clock at night that was a tradition for me mm. in terms of holidays you know i would say that we would have um what's that they call it capirotada in spanish which really uh it's it's the 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 the, the bread that they make fun of or the pot in christmas time they make fun of the fruit fruit thing the cake bread yeah. that one Fruit cake, whatever it's called. I don't know. They make fun of it in America. But in, in Mexico, it's, it's a dessert. It's really refined. And I remember that part. I remember the tradition of, so, but now in my mixed life, I'm Catholic, married a Jewish girl. You know, I don't, I don't know what I have, man. I don't know what I have tradition wise. I mean, I got to sit on this for a minute. I'm, I'm, when you brought it up to me, John, yesterday, I'm like, I don't know how to answer these questions. So you guys have to help me out today. Yeah. And I think the thing I try to do with these holidays and these traditions is make people feel special. So it's yeah. my parents, like take the burden off of them because it's at their house, but I'm like, let me take care of everything or let me, let me just order something. You know, let's make it simple. But I didn't realize I have a tradition. Um, I realized it today because I was struggling with this question too. And Carrie brought it up. Um, every time it's one of my boys' birthdays and today's my son Max's birthday, I let them order whatever they want for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, breakfast was not happening today. They were not having Chinese food for breakfast, so, so screw that. But so today it was Chinese food for lunch and Taco Bell for dinner, you know? And it's just an idea of like, you know what? I, I can be a hard ass with them sometime. Um, I, you know, I wanna teach them some discipline, but man, when it's his birthday, it's your day. It's your day, you know? You order what you want. You wanna go play Minecraft for four and a half hours in the bathroom, go ahead. Um, it's all good, you know, and I've been doing that for since for the last, you know, nine, well, I guess since he spoke, you know, so the last nine, eight years. So I love it. It's all about making him feel special in the center of attention that day. Yeah. yeah and I, I think that's the most important part is just really traditions are a way of just bringing people together and, and mm -hmm. showing them that you love them and mm -hmm. just really continuing that, that year after year generational, yeah. um, showing of love and, and, and servantship. And, and I know there's a couple of traditions that, so we, we have our family traditions where all of my siblings and myself, we, we host different holidays and we, we continue that on. 
um, and something that my ex-wife and I started with the kids when the girls when they were real little is we would we would wait till they woke up and then we would call my mom and dad and, and they would come over. And so kids could not open up a present until my mom and dad came over and opened, and then we would open them up all together. So that's something that we started and we continued that until our daughters were in their teen years. And nothing warmed my heart more than when my oldest daughter had her first daughter and that first Christmas rolled around. And she said, dad, she said, you know, I want you and mom to, to come over before Elia opens up her, her birthday or her Christmas presents. And that, that is something that like, I think about and I, I want her to continue to pass that down, something to keep in our family. Um, but just like you, Tim, um, my oldest daughter is a big breakfast for yep. dinner for her birthday. Um, yep. And that's something that we continue to do mm -hmm. too as well. So yeah, it's good to hear that. Um, so we're gonna circle back to Jose. You know, you, you, yeah, you sat on him a little bit. And it's working, it's working, <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I, I'm with you, I, we, for Christmas, um, no one opens gifts until everybody's in front of the tree. So yes, we have that tradition. And I brought that since I was a kid because, oh, here it is, because of midnight mass. Mm. That's it. Okay, it's coming. It's coming. So we'd go to midnight mass, got back from mass, and then opened up at one o'clock in the morning, you know, 1.30. That was the big thing. But now um, my mom's older. So we do the midnight mass, goes to sleep in the morning, then open everything up. So that's what I remember in terms of, uh, you know what it is? I'm an only child. Mm. That's, I think, as I'm listening to you guys, I don't have that pull of a massive amount of people or two or three, it's big enough for me, to pull into this kind of, we got to get together, we got to get together. Right. And I think that's why whatever I've, I've had as a tradition, we're really grounded around my father and my mm. mother. Um, I had cousins that I grew up with, which is great, but now that I'm not with them because they're in another town, that I guess traditions are gone. Yeah. Um, and I'm starting my own with my children. You know, I don't have them sit at the table every day to eat. That's not the kind of dad I am. Um, there's a lot of flexibility in my house. So to say, if you were to force me right now to write down what traditions you have in your family, I would say the Christmas, I would say the Hanukkah as we celebrate that as well. Um, but beyond that, there are no half twos. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are no real stringent, oh, negative. They have to say goodnight to their nana every night. And, and, and with my mother, right? They have to do that. So that's become, I guess, a tradition. Yeah. And I have to remind them constantly because I want them to know as boys how to hug, how to say it in Spanish, how to engage, how to care for someone beyond themselves. So that's become definitely a tradition, a, a thing we do here on our house. But this is a really good topic, man, because I think a lot of us as dads and as men, Maybe don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't, not to say that I don't appreciate traditions, but maybe we don't sit down and think about it as much as we should. And yeah. I think today, that's why I love this show because it's therapeutic for me and it makes me really think. What do you think, Tim? Right? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I, I love what you just said because I didn't realize I make my, my boys do that every night. I say, go and give hugs and kisses to Nan and Papa. And if they, especially mm -hmm. the little one, because he's a little space cadet, if he forgets, I will send him, I say, get your butt back there. Yeah. Yep. Do you yep. hug him? Did you hug Papa? And he'll be like, yeah. I'm like, no, you didn't. Go hug him again then. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I want them to be able to do that. But it's like you said, it's like, it's just things you do. Um, yeah. I just never labeled it as a tradition. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think it's also tough too, because, and I, I don't know about, but your family guys, like, or if it's just a generational thing or what it is, um, if people just disconnected more now, well, they are. But I mean, like, um, I, I, you know, I don't have those. I grew up with those big Christmases because I had like, 20 cousins and all that stuff. And somehow, you know, people, I get it, people get their own lives, but we never came back together to keep that going. It was always my grampy who was like the patriarch of the family who would bring everyone together. And once he passed away, it seems like people kind of splintered off and did their own thing. Well, I, I think that's the, that's one of the things that came up in, in the discussion with my brother and I, because, you know, he, he said to me, he said, Johnny, he said, I, I don't really know who's going to come over because everybody's still, yeah. practicing their own social distancing and you know we, we respect that and, and my point to him was it, it's not so much about the repetitive act of doing it year after year as much as it is is honoring our ancestors that came yeah. before us honoring the legacy that they built yeah. because you know when, when my mom explained like why we always or she always hosted 
the holidays, it was, you know, she told us like every matriarch in the family always hosted the holidays. Mm -hmm. and so that's how she honored her ancestors and kept that tradition going. And then, you know, that, that was my message to my brother. Like we, we, we're going to honor our ancestors. We're going to honor this tradition and we'll invite who we invite. And if they come, they come, they don't, but we don't want to let something like a pandemic, you mm -hmm. know, stop something that has been going on for generations and generations. And right. if anything, we want to show, like you said, Tim, like it could be a generational thing. We want to show our, our my, my nieces and nephews, his nieces and nephews, that this is something that's important to our family and we want to continue that. And so, you know, th those are things that I think about. And even like, you know, Jose, you're an only child and, and, and those things might not be, you know, in, in a tradition sense, but I, I wonder what it is that's something that you can start maybe now that honors your ancestors' legacy if you can teach your kids to carry that on. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I had this thing where, you know, I wanted to do something on a Sunday night, you know, a dinner, a gathering. I had this in my head. But but I think what I'm I'm starting to realize is I'm starting to come full circle. You know, and I think it's I'm maturing, I'm getting older, my sons are getting older. And, you know, I'm committing this summer to teaching my sons how to speak Spanish. Mm. Um, because I had this bias about, you know, needing to learn English because of my trauma, having to learn English. Uh, but how much I admire speaking Spanish now, that that's my commitment this summer, because with the Spanish come the traditions mm. that I've not been able to expose them to because they have no clue what I'm talking about. So it, it's not the symbolic piñata. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about maybe certain culture, uh, cultural references, um, certain idioms that I live by. Um, certain sort of in, in, so like dishes as well. I mean, mm -hmm. when they're so young, they don't like certain things. So then I can't have them, like I didn't either though, to be fair. But now I love these Mexican dishes that I want them to partake in. Um, I want them to love matzo ball soup. I love that, right? I didn't, it, to me, it's just albondigas, but it's the same thing, but maybe not. But I'm just saying like, there, there's, there comes that. But let me ask you, John, because I'm really curious about your background. You're Italian, right? Yes, yep. What's your one traditional meal you must have every year? That's what I want to know. So traditional, it's not, traditional yeah, it's, Italian meal. Yeah, well, that and that's the catch. So uh -oh. even though we are, our, our heritage is, is Italian, we, we don't have a traditional mm. Italian meal that we serve. Mm. But one thing that, that has been passed down from generations to generations is my mother's recipe for stuffing at Thanksgiving. Mm. It is the most amazing, it, it will put 10 pounds on you <laughs> in one day, but oh. it is the most amazing recipe for stuffing. And that's something that we eat every Thanksgiving. And for some reason, because my dad likes them, he's the only person that eats them is yams. The, the, oh, girls, wow. will always bring, the girls will always bring <laughs> and put out yams and he will be the only one to eat them. Um, and, and so those, those are the, those are the few things that we do. And I, I don't know if this is an, a, an, a, an Italian thing, but the babies of the family, when we decorate the tree are the ones that always put the star or the angel on the top of the tree. Oh. And so when I was a kid, we would, so and that's another tradition that, that we, that we continued. So my mom would invite all of the kids and the grandkids over to decorate the Christmas tree. And during that ceremony, I would be, since I was the baby of the family, I would always put the, put the angel on top of the tree. Well, I continue that tradition. So when, I, when we decorate our tree, which is the same time every year, it's always the first Saturday after Thanksgiving is when we put up our tree and we decorate it. So now Antonia, the baby of the family, puts the, puts the mm -hmm. angel on the tree. So, and I don't know if that's an Italian thing, but that's just something that you know, has always been a staple in our family as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you reminded me of a. This is bringing up so much stuff for me. I didn't realize what traditions. Yeah. You know, one of the things my ex-wife and me started about nine years, ten years ago, actually, was buying a real tree, buying that real Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I don't go to church anymore, but this is probably the closest thing I, I, I get to like a ritual around, around Christmas time. And we get, I get in the car with my boys. First, we have to stop off and get a hot chocolate with whipped cream. There it is. Yep, we go to Mahoney's Christmas tree farm in Winchester, Mass. Wow. Even though there's one like right down the street and all the schools have them we go to the same place. They pick the tree, 
it doesn't matter if it is the Charlie Brown Christmas tree or the big, I've had trees that are like the most disgusting things you've seen in my, li my life. Or one a couple of years ago, I, had, I got home and I had to cut another foot and a half off this tree. It was at the Griswold family tree. Bring it back home, let it drop. And the next day, you know, we start to decorate it. And uh, yeah, we've been, geez, we've been doing that for nine years now. Wow. Yeah, that's, see? The holidays, that's when the holiday season starts for me. And I'm sure that's something that, that will continue with your kids yeah. long, long down the road. Yeah. Now, for Thanksgiving, here we go. This is traditions. We try not to do turkey at Thanksgiving. We try to do something like lasagna, burgers, hot dogs. We just try to mix it up. I mean, we do eventually do it, I think, every four or five years. But we just try to – it's just something we just thought of one day as a family. Why don't we just do something different? And we've just been trying to do something different every time for Thanksgiving. I think that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, because yeah. how many people really want to buy a whole turkey anyway? That's yeah. a lot I eat turkey all year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, Jose, I mean, the, the, the question that you pose and, and the fact that, you know, we are Italian and we, we don't have a staple Italian meal, I, mm -hmm. I think it's something I'm going to propose for, for next Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. And, well, because and, and, you, you said honor generations, and I thought, man, there's got to be in Italians, I mean, there's got to be some, oof, some beauties of foods that are so antiquated, but just, you know, man, I can't even imagine what it would be like. Yeah, and, and in our family, it never really caught on. But now, now that I think about it, when we, when we would go to my aunt's house around Christmas time, and now mind you, I was young. And so I don't know how many kids my age was really like into fish, but my aunt mm -hmm. would always have a traditional fish meal during Christmas, which I, which I thought was just the oddest thing in the whole wide world. But mm. um, I, I think that had something to do with my grandmother um, in, in, a, in a dish that she made, which was an Italian dish with pasta and fish. Um, that's something that never like really latched on to our side of the family because it was really important at the time. Um, it's not so much like that these days, but when I was growing up and my dad, my dad was younger, it, it was more important to him to kind of Americanize our family mm -hmm. and, and, and not kind of stand out, um, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as Italian. Um, Cause we, you know, there was what I remember in the neighborhood that I grew up on, there was a lot of like, just like mafioso type speak mm -hmm. around Italians and, you know, the way that, you know, the whole Scarface and, and Al mm -hmm. Capone and all that stuff. So my, my dad tried to steer us away from that stereotype and, and try to Americanize us. Um, and now that I think about it, you know, I, I wonder what traditions we lost in, in that assimilation uh, mm -hmm. that our father yeah. put us through. Hey, Tim, your ancestors. Yeah. Talk to us about them. And back to John's question, what, what's that food that your ancestors would love for you to have right now? that you're not well, having? Well, my ancestors are mainly Irish and Italian. The, Let's go with Irish. Let's talk about Irish. You know what? Not much, to be honest with you. I mean, it's pretty, I mean, or maybe I think it's boring stuff. Um, you know, ham and potatoes. I mean, nothing too crazy, honestly. But I can tell you, like, the Italians have. Okay. Stereotypical, like, huge meals. Huge meals. I never heard of the seven fishes, though, until, like, I, I, I was in my mid-20s. We never did that. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, huge plates of pasta, veal parm, chicken parm. And that was like, that was a normal Sunday. <laughs> meal. Yeah. I think back now, like in the eighties, going over to my grandparents place in, um, in Everett, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston and just having this, it was like a hot summer day. It was like 105 degrees and they're serving like pasta and <laughs> stuff, peppers and spaghetti and meatballs and we're just all mowing into it you know and we did that like every single sunday oh gosh how we were doing to ourselves but it was great you know and i always i always remember that but i think it was honestly just that italian food you always hear about pasta 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 with some meat all right let's talk about this this is traditions all right i'm not one to celebrate cinco de mayo it's not it's not like a thing for me yeah but it's saint patty's day yeah uh. A thing for you? No, that's like you know what? That was always amateur hour anyway. I, I'm, 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 I'm 42 year old, years old, man. I mean, I, I worked in downtown Boston. And I saw what happens on St. Patty's Day during the parade. Yeah, it's 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 just chaos. I'm staying in, man. 
I'm yeah. staying in. Um, I do have some family that has that Irish pride. And mm. I, the, the city that right next to mine is Charlestown, which is like the most Irish city on the face of the earth next to South Boston. And, oh. you know, they, 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 they've got the Irish flags out. My cousins are from there and they love, like they know their old history. They can trace back to Ireland. Um, it was never really my thing, to be honest with you. It was never, it's just, you know, hey, it's, it's, it's a messy day. It's a messy day. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So we, it, it's ironic that you bring that up, Jose, because yeah. we, we do celebrate kind of hard, and I don't know why, but we do celebrate Cinco de Mayo. You do. In, in, in our family. More, more than we celebrate um, the 4th of July. All right. The, the 4th of July, I, I don't know what it is. I, I never really got into the whole, like, the fireworks, like mm -hmm. going somewhere to see a huge fireworks display was never really my thing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's maybe because, you know, I see them at, you know, Friday night high school football games, right. you know, going to see, watch the Indians, you know, fireworks. So it, it's just never been my thing, but I've always enjoyed the, the idea of Cinco de Mayo. And that, that's something that, you know, we look forward to every year in, in my family. No kidding. I think maybe because it's been so, I'm sure I did in college. I mean, you know, why, any, any reason to go do something in college, but I don't know. I just, I've never felt it to be uh, very authentic for me. Um, it felt just to be like St. Patty's Day or it felt like it to be like 4th of July. 4th of July, because I grew up in a small town, we used to be able to go to the, fo uh, the football field of the high school, lay on the football field and the fireworks above us. And in a small town, I mean, that's like, that's everything, you know, because you didn't really have much to really distract yourself with. Um, so for me, that that was the moment to know that, okay, fireworks were the, the distraction for us. And they were so, you know, oh, wow, the field caught on fire. That's fun, you know, because that always <laughs> happens, these fireworks. Yeah. But yeah, that's honestly the only things I can think of. Christmas is the big one. Yeah. Thanksgiving's a big one. Spring break, just because of college and high school and you were looking forward to it. Easter. I remember looking for eggs, man. I that that that's real for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I like the candy. What about yeah. New Year's? Okay, that's interesting. So New Year's for me used to be that I would go across the border to Mexicali. It's a border oh, town. Wow. Yeah. My mom and dad. My dad. My mom was was uh, she was she was an orphan, but she was she was raised in that town. Mm -hmm. I have extended family there through my mom, not blood related, but just related. And they, man, we used to have firecracker wars with the neighbors when I was younger. That was a lot of fun. You know, Mexican fireworks, man, come on. <laughs> they're like, they're explosives. And I remember them popping in my hand and like, I remember feeling like a man afterwards, like my hand's still intact, you know, but they were, I'm sure it was nothing. But to me, it was like everything. And we'd just be throwing them at each other. And then we all kind of grew out of it. You know, I stopped going, um, life got in the way and then my father passed away, you know, just, it's not been the same. People are getting older. Uh, but I would say that was, New Year's was a thing. You would just go across the border and, 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 you know, stay up and have fun as a family. But I never did the, let's go out to dance and clubs and all of that. that I would always go across the border. That'd be mine. Tim, how about you? One of the things we have, um, another tradition I thought of was, it's not really a holiday, but in Boston, especially in the, the North End, the Italian section of Boston, where some of my family grew up was they have the feasts. Um, they have like the feast of St. Anthony, the feast of St. Luke, mm -hmm. every Sunday. And then, um, oh man, I can't remember what the big one. I think it's this feast of St. Francis is the big one. Um, and we used to go down there every year for about 15 years uh, because my, my great grandmother lived down there still. Um, and we used to love that. And it, I loved it because it was a whole different world. I mean, this isn't like now, you're spending $5,000 on a condo in the North End. It's like these old Italian guys who have never left the North End in their lives. And, um, you know, I mean, it was just like parades and, you know, food vendors. Um, you know, I, I have this blurry picture of the one time when I was one and the Pope drove by when he, when he visited. And, um, I remember my mom taking me to buy like these cheap toys from these vendors and meeting everyone. Um, it was just a, a whole different world to me, but that was like a sign of summer that we used to go to all the time. That's great. Yeah. So one, one thing, one thing about new year's for me, that was a tradition is no matter where I was, 
I always had to ring in the new year with my parents. Nice. Like, and that, I mean, that was like, even when I was a teenager in my young twenties, I mean, I literally, this is a funny story for another time, but I, I lost a girlfriend o- over this tradition because we, we were at this new year's party and I said, listen, around 1130, we got to get back on the road. I got to be with my parents when the new nice. year's in. Yeah. And it wasn't shortly after that, that <laughs> I got to like, you know, you're kind of too attached to your parents' speech. <laughs> but that that was a tradition that rang true. Um, and it's something that I carry on and I try to carry on with Antonia. Because I, I remember the first time that I, I called my brother on New Year's to wish him Happy New Year's. It was like 1201. And I didn't get an answer. So I was kind of worried. And I, I called him the next day and I said, hey, like, you know, I tried to call you. He's like, yeah, I saw that. But I went to bed around 1030. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> So to me, the world ended. Like I couldn't believe somebody didn't like, like slept through the new year. Yeah. Um, but it, it's something that I'm trying to continue as a father, like trying to like make sure I'm on the phone. Like I can't be with my dad because he's a little bit more elderly now. Um, and when we go to his house, he no longer has a TV. So it's kind of lost his whole like, you know, ringing in the new year excitement. Um, but I, I always try to call him. And I try to instill that in, in my girls too. So, and for the most part, it's it's latching on. You know, like they they're they're they respond, they're calling me. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how we always spent the New Year's, and uh, I always had to be with my parents, and that that was a tradition. Things I like about New Year's are the are the marathons. Uh-huh. I like the TV marathons. Staying up, I used to stay up with my mom. I'd watch the Twilight Zone marathon. <laughs> um, I never got too much into the Three Stooges marathon. You know, I just, I just love that. Staying up and watching these crazy. Yep, there you go. <laughs> so, so no them. Dick Clark, huh? No Dick Clark. No, no Dick Clark. No Dick Clark. Do you, any of you have any athletic traditions like uh, to watch or movies to watch at a certain time of the year that you have to do that at that time? Do you have any of that? Beyond the have, marathons, like things you have to do. So every Christmas season, I have to watch Die Hard. The first Die Hard. There like, you go. That, that is like, that is a staple. That's no <laughs> it, kidding. Yeah, it's Christmas, not okay, wait, Christmas, Christmas season. Christmas season I that. or a week or a day? What do you mean season? What are you talking about? Like er- every Christmas. So like shortly after I put up the Christmas tree, uh, one of the first things that I like to do is I like to put on Die Hard and watch John McClane save, save the Dr. Tony <laughs> Tower. That's, that's that's a tradition. That's you know, we have some movies too. I know the movies I like to watch on Christmas Eve while I'm getting things ready. Big Tarantino fan, so I'll always watch the Kill Bills, <laughs> Inglorious Bastards, oh my and then God. somehow um, the uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation gets thrown in there. I haven't been able to stay up late enough to watch them all, but I always they're always on my on my list to watch. What about you, Jose? I would Great say that's interesting. I would say every year I have to watch Shawshank Redemption, mm. A White Man Can Jump. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to watch those two. And <laughs> I <laughs> and what, what I love I, your reaction to White Man Can Jump. <laughs> like, well, I like because you brought back White Man Can Jump and then Demolition <laughs> Man, two of my favorite movies I've not watched in years. Yeah. I have to watch those. I constantly though, constantly watch I Love Lucy. Andy Griffith, nice. um, Seinfeld, mm-hmm. uh, and Frazier, those are, and West Wing. Those are like my constant background noise while I'm working kind of shows that I have on that are one of my favorites. But uh, fun fact, I also love watching MTV shows like Teen Mom, Teen Mom OG. Listen, I was a high school counselor, and I had to stay connected. And I have not let go of those shows for 10 years. <laughs> I got to know what these people are doing, man. I got to know. <laughs> we are getting a little peek into Jose's soul. Like, just hearing yeah. about those guilty yeah. pleasures. I got to know what's going on. I'm sure there's other films I like to watch in a year. Certainly, I got to catch the NBA playoffs. Um, that's my favorite time. I kind of boycotted the NFL, I ain't going to lie, uh, because of the political stuff. Mm. Um, I got roped back into it through fantasy football, through some buddies of mine. I uh, came in second, which was great. And then um, I, when Tiger was around, I love the golf. That was like, I had to get into that. 
Um, and I would say baseball, definitely the World Series. I like just I, I like the competitive nature of it. I like the strategy behind it. I like learning that part. I'm a learner by nature. And I think I watch it more for that than the actual outcome. I mean, I, you know, I keep up with sports just for dialogue and understanding as a whole. But I think as I'm getting older, I'm realizing it's more about the strategy and all of that. And, and what is it about us that we like run, watching reruns, though? I mean, I've been criticized for that in my life, I'll be honest. Now, for me, it's that euphoric feeling. It's, it's kind of yeah. like when, when, you, when you smell something and it brings yeah. like a happy time in your yeah. life. That's, that's what watching reruns is for me. Mm. Um, but but talk, talk to me more about sports, Jose. Is there something that you do? Like, do you have to go? So you're in San Diego, right? Yeah. So do you have to go to a Padres game every year with your kids? Is that like? Well, okay. So I grew up in Blythe, California, way the last city crossing the Arizona border. And I followed at that time, California Angels, you know, Rod Carew and his bat swing. I mean, I followed, you know, uh, Fernando Valenzuela from the Dodgers and then the Oakland A's. I mean, so I followed all those teams, but no, even growing up, I'm kind of a California sports guy. Mm-hmm. But I'm, yeah, I'm not that hardcore. I got, but, you know, I got to go see them. I, gotta go, I go to Lakers games when I can. I try to have the experience. I've gone to UCLA basketball games. I try to just have the experience, but I'm not like some of these folks around here where, man, they can't get enough of this sport team or that sport, or, or they travel. But do you, do you guys have that experience? I mean, I was going to bring up, um, I mean, I don't know if it's a, if it's a tradition, but um, uh, we do have a pretty good football team. Well, we did in New England, so it used to be <laughs> nice. You mean you did? You mean we you did? did. We did. Back in, the, back in the day, you know, it used to be nice to flip on the TV on Super Bowl Sunday and watch the uh, Patriots get in there. That's right. You know? But that's another one there, the Super Bowl. Honestly, even, and I think even if you're not a football fan, that's something people just party it up and get together just to watch this big game. I mean, honestly, even when the Patriots aren't in it, if they weren't winning, I could really kill us about football. It's not my favorite sport. I love baseball, but I'll sit down and I'll watch the Super Bowl. you know, with my dad, my brother will come over. The family will be there. It's, it's just, just an all around good time. Even if you're not into the game, maybe you're into the commercials. Wow. Yeah. So, so fun fact about the Super Bowl. you know, I'm, I'm in Ohio. So we have, we have the football hall of fame right in my backyard. And uh, I, I go there um, every year, which, which could be another tradition. But I do go there every year. <clears throat> and, I, and I always go Labor Day because you can walk right in and, and have like, it, it's all yours. There's like 10 people there. Um, but they say that the Super Bowl, that Americans consume more chips on the Super Bowl than any holiday in the, in, in the United yeah. States of America, right there on the Super Bowl. Yeah, chips and dip. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Is there so no, a, no Red Sox? No Red Sox games, Tim. Like you, you know, know you what? Don't... I gotta tell you, it's different now. You know, I used to go to tons of Red Sox games when I was growing up. Tons of it back before they won the World Series, and it used to be great. Um, right now, I mean, Fenway Park. You go there and they call them, you know, the Pink Cats. You know, it's not really there for the baseball fans anymore. It's more of an experience. When I've gotten tickets, I love bringing my kids there. But um, it's definitely not that, that same feel when I used to pay like $10 for a grandstand seat to watch Roger Clemens. Okay. You know, unfortunately, it's kind of like, um, and really the same thing with the Patriots. You know, I used to go see them when they, when they with the, the Drew Bled, the pre-Drew Bledsoe days, the pre-Tom Brady days when they stunk. Um, and it's just a different vibe, you know. It's, a, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really more for the casual fan. Yeah. In our family, a few sports trans, uh, traditions kind of stick out to me. So my brother and I, every year, including this year, we didn't let the, we didn't let the pandemic um, stop us. We, we always get together for the NFL draft. Mm. Um, something else that, that we always do together is we always go, and we've done this for the past six years, except for this year, of course, um, we always go to the Cleveland Indians home opener. So uh-huh. we, we belong to this like private social club. You know, the owner rents this big party bus, takes the members down, you know, go see the game, come back. So it's a really fun time we missed out on this year. Um, But yeah, I mean, most of our traditions in our family usually usually center around a specific day, a holiday, or food. Um, Sports, just usually just between me and my brother. My dad, my dad was never really a big sports guy. He he would watch, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't really his his forte or his, you know, what he got into is more, more studied gentleman. Now, do you have a favorite 
drink you must have every year for the holidays or something. So for me, it's it's not alcoholic. It's called champurrado. It's a uh, chocolate version of a hot chocolate, but it's thicker. You almost have to eat it with the spoon. And my aunt in Mexicali would make it for me. Um, and I loved it. And I want to have that every year. I don't get to every year, but um, when I can, I do. Is there a drink you must have every year that symbolizes something for you? I guess it could be alcoholic, but I'm saying it's more like, I don't know. Do you have something? So we, we do. And it's, it's, it has, we, we grow, uh, I grew up, we live in a very predominantly Hispanic community. Mm. So a lot of my friends are Hispanic. And every Thanksgiving and Christmas season, we have to have homemade coquito. Wow. So that's, that's something that I look forward to every year. Wow. Um, it's, it's, it's just amazing. So that, that's ours. What about you, Tim? Um, my new tradition has been the, um, oh, what is it? The St. Patrick's Day uh, McDonald's shake. Oh. oh yes oh my god the shamrock steak the shamrock, the shamrock. Shake. Yes, I got yes. this a few years ago and i gotta tell you that's it that's like that's like the beginning of spring for me uh, okay when i'm driving by and i see that shamrock shake ad uh, I, I pull into mickey d's and i get it <laughs> that's it short of, short of that i'm a coffee guy but oh that is so good <laughs> yeah yeah well, listen, fellas, we have about four more minutes, uh, so, so we'll wrap up um, this episode of, of Dad to Dad and talking about family uh, traditions. I don't know why I want to keep on saying transitions, um, but, uh, you know, we want, want to make a shout out to Mike Scott. You know, we missed him today, um, had a very important work obligation, so we hope to have him back next week and hopefully a special guest along with him. Um, but we want to encourage everybody out there to have used this episode. If there's a specific topic you want us to talk about on Dad to Dad, uh, please, you know, send it in. We'd be more than happy to uh, discuss it between the four of us. Um, but any any parting shots, Jose? I finally followed through, John. You did? I did. Talk to me about it. How did it make you it, feel? It, uh, it went really well. I, I told uh, this individual we haven't talked in a long time. And I text him first, right? Talked a long time. I want you to know you're not alone. I love you. And if you ever need anything, you let me know. And he responded right away. Get out and of town. Like, you know, I need to do more of that. And so I did it to two more of my friends who I've been in contact with, but kind of lost a little bit of touch the last few weeks and great response back. So I have one more left I think I want to do. Um, I'm trying to wrap up here. Uh, but I think that was the move and it, it went well. So thanks for the encouragement, man. I really, I've been thinking about you. I'm like, I gotta do this. I got John's going to be on me. I got to do this. <laughs> no, do don't, don't thank me. Thank, thank my mom, Lynette, Lynette Montelion, because mm. she, she has always instilled in all of her children to never hold a grudge or mm. never let something come in between you and another mm. person. Always be the one to reach out, extend that olive branch, show the love she was really big in uh, really big on second chances mm. everybody deserves a second chance and you know what they do with it um you know is, is their decision but man good job jose i mean did you, you feel better i do feel better i ain't gonna lie i do okay. feel better i you know and i never thought i held grudges i just don't forget is that they're different <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what do you think tim <laughs> kind of... <laughs> well, you know what? yeah i'm gonna end this with the uh, First of all, John, you did a great job, but I want to tell you a little story. I was talking to our friend Marisol the other day. Yes. And you reminded me of this when you brought up your mom just mm. now. And we were just talking about something that turned into like an hour and a half conversation. And then you came up and I said, God, you really hooked me up with some good guys here. We went through, we, 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 we talked about each of your personalities. We'll talk about you next week, Jose. That might be a topic, but oh. John, we talked about you and I said, you know what? We, we talked about the concept of ancestors and honoring ancestors, which I learned from Marisol. Yes. And I, and I love the fact how every single show we have, you refer to your mom mm -hmm. and how like, you know, through this tough guy running 18 miles a day, tatted exterior, you know, <laughs> in the end, man, you, you, you love your mom and you honor her so much, man. That's just, oh. that's just incredible. I love hearing Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Yeah, my, my mom was, 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 and I'm not afraid to say this, my mom was my best friend and my, mm. my parents were my, my first and foremost um, teachers, and, and, but they've always been my greatest advocates. Mm. And, and mm. Like, I'll, I'll never, I am who I am because they are who they are, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
It's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Well, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Tim, thank you for this opportunity again to host. And uh, Jose, thank you for just being you. Um, as Mike would say, um, I love you both, and there's nothing you can do about it. And, and we'll say that to honor him today. And uh, today it was bring a close to this show. So thank you, fellas. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good job. Uh -huh.